Hi, this is Mr. Guy, and we're going over the bureaucracy, which is really part of the presidency, and it's dealing with the executive office of the president. So we're going to go over this quickly. And again, I've said the uh, Prezi that I'm posting online for the uh, interaction among branches executive is really good. But this is what we have in our book, and this is what you have. So this is supplement. So I'd like you to review this, look at this, and uh, see see what you think, and hopefully this is helpful. United States bureaucracy, a bureaucracy just in definition is a large complex organization comprised of appointed officials. A bureaucracy is in every uh, organization. Um, and in the United States, we're talking about the executive branch. Political authority of the bureaucracy is shared by the president and Congress. Federal ag agencies share functions with related state and local agencies. The political authority typically is the president's in charge, but everything was authorized by Congress, and then uh, they work with state and local agencies. The growth of the bureaucracy. Patronage, which is basically the spoil system from Andrew Jackson on in the 19th and early 20th centuries, rewarded supporters, induced congressional support, and built party organizations. Civil War showed the administrative weakness of the federal government and increased demands for civil service reform, but this didn't happen until the 1880s. The growth of the bureaucracy. Post-Civil War period saw industrialization, the emergence of a national economy with the building of railroads, the land grants, um, and there's the economy basically going from coast to coast and the government growing. The power of the national government became to regulate interstate commerce became necessary and controversial. The first group that actually was a bureaucracy was the Interstate Commerce Commission, ICC, which helped regulate the railroads. The Depression in World War II led to government activism. The Supreme Court upheld laws that granted discretion to the administrative agencies. Heavy use of income taxes, basically from the 16th Amendment, um, with the income tax supported the large effort in a large bureaucracy. 9-11, the 9-11 attacks also affected the bureaucracy as profoundly as World War II and the Depression. Um, it was the last agency, the uh, Homeland um, Agency uh, was the last one that was done. We also combined different agencies and different things. So we have a new cabinet agency, the Department of Homeland Security was created. Intelligence and gathering were consolidated under a national intelligence director. Previously, the FBI and the CIA would never talk to each other. They would never coordinate and do those kind of things. The FBI was domestic and CIA was international. And they finally, after 9-11, decided to talk with each other. and made a lot of sense to do that. There's been a modest increase in the number of government employees um, since 1960 to today, um, but that's with the government employees. Significant indirect increase in the number of employees through the use of private contractors, state and local government employees. Private contractors, especially with like, uh, you know, that help with the military, with the, the food, building things, taking care of the military, that's all private contractors, military police, private contractors, actually people guarding the embassies, private contractors, um, the NSA, a lot of private contractors. Um, Growth in discretional authority with Congress. And here's the chart with federal government money, people, and regulations. So here's expenditures going up as a percent of GDP. Of course, that was in World War II, and then it's been pretty much level. Here's employment. Um, looking at 2 million employees, and right now we're below 3 million employees, um, and that's federal government. And then here is the money, people, and these are regulations. Big increase in regulations, but it's actually been decreasing since the 2000s. Competitive service now. Bureaucrats compete for jobs through the Office of Personal Management. Appointments are by merit based on written exam through selection criteria. So we have the civil service exam and we have civil service um, processes. With the actual civil service, minority employment has actually increased, um, and you're going to see minority employment by bureaucracy. So there's GS, that's um, their grade, the lower grades, one through four. You have how many percent, 29, almost 30 percent black, almost 10 percent Hispanic. And then as you go up, the numbers go down, but the totals are pretty good. 
So the federal government has been good, been good for hiring minorities. And then you look at typically male in 1960, and it's getting closer to half and half. The race pretty much was 70% white um, in 1999, unavailable in 1960. So you're seeing there's more uh, males, females, there's more combination, there's more diversity in the federal government. And you definitely look at in location um, in Washington, D.C., it's only 11 percent, but it's elsewhere. It's about 89 percent. So most of the government jobs are not in Washington, outside of Washington. Um, look at how much the De Department of Defense was 44 percent. Postal Service was 23 percent in 1960. And now Postal Service is much larger and the Department of Defense is smaller. So that's a very interesting chart right there. Better service system has become more decentralized. It means it's in the states, it's in different offices, less reliant on the Office of Personnel Management referral. Bureaucrats appointed by agencies, typically in a nonpartisan faction. So typically our bureaucrats, the people that work for the federal government, it doesn't matter whether they're Democrats, Republicans, they work for the government, they work for the country. It's very high, hard to fire a bureaucrat. It's very hard to fire somebody. Um, Typically, they try to move them somewhere, get them to where they don't want to do a job versus, and have them quit. That's easier. The Senior Executive Service, SES, was established to provide the president and cabinet with more control and personal decisions so they can fire them easier. Very few SES members have actually been fired, though. Most bureaucrats try to carry out policy, even those that they disagree with, even if it doesn't matter what president they are. Bureaucrats do have destructive powers like the Whistleblower Protection Act, 1989. Most civil servants have highly structured jobs that make their personal attitudes irrelevant. They have the job to do, and that's what they're doing. Constraints on the bureaucracy, um, much greater than on government agencies than private bureaucracies. Hiring, firing, pay, and other procedures are established by law, not by the market, which is by Congress and by the federal government. Constraints come from citizens. People can complain about an agency. Agencies try to respond to citizens' demand for openness, honesty, and fairness. Agencies often seek alliances with congressional committees and interest groups. That's part of the Iron Triangle. These alliances are far less common today. Politics have become too complicated, but there still is that Iron Triangle. Issue networks, group that regularly debate government policy on certain issues, and they work in a certain area, and they might be the media, they might be agencies, committees, and so on working together. Congressional oversight, Congress creates the agencies, Congress authorizes funds for the programs, Congress appropriates funds for the agency to spend on its programs, so they authorize the money, they appropriate the money, they create the agency. They can do investigations on the agency to see where the money's going, where it's being spent. They've done this in the past on the IRS, on the um, ATF, the al alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. Here are some pathologies, red tape. This is complex, sometimes conflicting rules, hard to get things passed. Conflict, agencies work at cross purposes. Many agencies actually have uh, conflicting purposes, conflicting things that they work on, and they have duplication. Two or more agencies seem to do the same thing. Imperialism, tendency of agencies to grow irrespective of programs, costs, and benefits. Typically, if you've got a budget, your budget doesn't go down. You must spend the money or else if you don't spend the money, you lose the money. Waste, spending more than is necessary um, to buy the same product or service. So there's spending more than it's needed, and if you don't spend the money, you lose it. Reform in the bureaucracy. National Performance Review, NPR, in 1993 under Bill Clinton, designed to reinvent government, calling for less centralized government management, more employee initiatives, fewer deta detailed rules, more customer satisfaction, trying to get the government more responsive. Most rules and red tape are due to struggles between the president and Congress or to agencies' efforts to avoid alienate voters. Periods of divided government worsen matters, especially in implementing policy. And that's basically the bureaucracy. Remember, the bureaucracy is part of the federal government, the executive branch. It's part, they're underneath the Congress. There are actually, there's the White House staff, 
There's the executive office of the president. There's actually executive agencies, independent executive agencies, regulatory agencies, and then there's government corporations. There's, there's quite a lot in the bureaucracy. Make sure you read the book and go over the actual uh, Prezi. And thanks very much and have a good day.